Well, joining us now is the A-Team, former Clinton advisor, Fox News political analyst, Doug Schoen, co-editor of Investors Business Daily, Michael Ramirez. That sounds like a new title. We'll talk to Michael mm -hmm. about that. Fortune Magazine, Washington columnist, Fox News political analyst, Nina Easton. Nina, good to have you with us. Let's start Great with, uh, I, I don't know if you saw my discussion with Dr. Saltz. I mean, we're talking about mental illness in this country, and we're doing so as if we're in the Middle Ages. I, it is extraordinary to me to, to, to encounter how difficult it is to have an intelligent conversation uh, with educated, knowledgeable people about mental illness and the impact without being hidebound by political correctness. Am I wrong, Nina? Well, yeah, I mean, you have to go back, really, I think, to the ACLU on this question. And the, and the big problem in my mind and a lot of people's minds is that you cannot commit an adult, even if you're a frightened mother, you cannot commit an adult, uh, even if that person is threatening, until they've actually committed a crime or done something violent. That's a problem. Uh, we have a lot of, of people in this country who need yeah. serious attention before violence strikes. The estimate is about 7% with serious uh, right. mental illness, 20% of us needing help at some point in the course of a year. Lou, I, I've had this in my family for a number of generations. I've seen it up first. Of course this fellow was mentally ill. It's pretty obvious and clear, and it's clear that unless we get treatment for mental health and mental infirmities, we will have more tragedies and more dysfunctionality. So it's clear, obvious, and unambiguous. And, Michael, uh, the response of our uh, policymakers in Washington is to talk about gun control when, and not public school safety or security, uh, not mental illness or, or, or what we are doing to ourselves as a society uh, when it comes to violence, whether it's in the media, whether it's video games, whatever it might be. You know, and that's a problem, Lou, is that people react emotionally to these events, and it's understandable. I mean, Sandy Hook was a horrible tragedy, but when you put it in perspective, in the past 30 years, 543 people have been killed in these kind of, uh, in 70 mass shootings, which c comes out to about 18 per year. What we need to do is we need to think of what the proper solution is. I think Nina's right. Half century ago, this politically motivated uh, ruling that allowed uh, insane people basically to be their own judge whether or not they're put in mental institutions. And, and we saw in the case of Norway where you had that uh, person who had mental problems yep. and they had great health, uh, health system there. It couldn't prevent the, uh, the shooting there either. Well, we're going to continue can I, can this I struggle on this yeah. broadcast yeah. To, to, to deal with this we're, issue. We are awfully okay. short on time tonight. I'm going to turn, if I may, to the fiscal cliff, which is another mm -hmm. mind-numbing uh, and perhaps a demonstration of the issue we're talking about. But uh, the president's saying he's going to veto. Harry Reid's saying that, well, that Plan B won't pass. John Boehner's saying in less than well, 56 seconds that it's Plan B or the highway this time, Mr. President, because we've had it. Uh, the last are my words characterizing his seeming mood. Nina, your thoughts? Can I just also add, just our previous conversation, uh, we have to do something about semi-automatic weapons, which were a, which you have know, been a I really appreciate you doing that, but I really, okay. I, I, my entry was on time. I'm and sorry. It's so, not helpful. Yeah. And on the, on the fiscal cliff, I think the president inappropriately tried to tie this whole issue to the mass murder on, uh, on Friday, saying, because of that, you have to come to my terms and agree to my terms. And in fact, the Republicans have given a lot. And uh, this president hasn't given much. He, he said he wanted to make a legacy on spending. How does it and break? On, on Are we going over the cliff or is there going to be a, is there going to? I think at the end of the day, there will be an agreement. Unfortunately, it's going to be small bore and it's not going to do anything about controlling uh, deficits long or de debts long term. Uh, I agree with Nina. I think we're going to come back after Christmas. Saner heads will prevail. They'll get a deal that will be a stopgap measure to get us into January, and it will avoid the worst impact of the fiscal cliff uh, and sequestration, but won't solve the problem. In time to keep uh, to prevent turmoil in the markets, Michael. Yeah, you know, I think it's going to cause more turmoil because, look, we're not even talking about the, the tax increases on investments here where you get a 3.8 percent tax increase under Obamacare. And then you, the, the president's planning it to increase those from 15 to 20 percent with dividends from 15 to 43 percent. I think, uh, you know, whether or not we go over this fiscal cliff, it's going to be a terrible road for America. We've got time for you to finish your thoughts. Uh, we've got 15 extra seconds, Dina. Semi-automatic weapons, handguns, sorry, you name yeah. it. What's your view? 
My view is that we had six-year-olds with three to 11 wounds in each of their little bodies and that um, we've got to do something about the proliferation of these of these weapons. Australia did it after a mass murder, murder and it actually worked. Doug Schoen, Michael Ramirez, Nina Easton, we thank, thank you very you. much for thank your you. views and we thank you for sharing them with us.